I woke up with my daughter in my arms. She looked at me and said, Mommy, this is not your fault. Don't give up. An emotional response from Rochester Mayor Lovely Warren after her husband is arrested and arraigned on drug and weapons charges. Emotion that turns to anger as she asserts it was motivated by politics as she seeks re-election. I find the timing of yesterday's events, three weeks before early voting starts, to be highly suspicious. I'll start with this because I'm sure there are going to be people out there who think that this is politically motivated. It was not. Good evening, I'm Don Elhard. Several new developments tonight in the arrest of Rochester Mayor Warren's husband, 42-year-old Timothy Granison. Let's get right to our team coverage. Tanner Jubinville, Dan Schrack, Andrew Bainis, all standing by. We're going to begin, though, with Jane Chaco live at City Hall and the response from Mayor Lovely Warren, who, as we point out, questions the timing of the events. Jane. Don, the mayor said she and her husband signed a separation agreement years ago and are co-parenting for the sake of their daughter. And she says the timing of the arrest and the raid is highly suspicious, claiming politics plays a role. I woke up to the fact that some people would do anything to try and break me. Rochester City Mayor Lovely Warren did not address any details of the police investigation, but instead questioned the timing. I find the timing of yesterday's events, three weeks before early voting starts, to be highly suspicious. Warren says while she is not defending Granison, she believes her husband's arrest is politically motivated coming one month before the Democratic primary. Why, after I announced we were moving forward with reparations and universal basic income and dropping 1,500 lawn signs, billboards, and radio ads, they saw like you saw. She also raised questions about Granison's next court date. We need to ask ourselves if this is not about politics, why is Tim's next court date June 21st, the day before primary day? Now that's quite the coincidence. During Granison's arraignment earlier today, his attorney, John DeMarco, requested the trial date be a month out because he is out of state for another trial. Mayor Warren did not take any questions from reporters after her statement today, and she did not comment on the evidence police say was discovered in her home. Don? All right. Hey, thank you, Jane. Now, state police and the Monroe County District Attorney say Timothy Granison is one of at least seven people involved in the alleged narcotics ring. And Santa Jubinville tells us Granison wasn't the original target of this operation. Well, the district attorney says police learned of Granison's alleged role a little over halfway into a seven-month-long wiretapping investigation. Mayor Lovely Warren's husband, Timothy Granison, said nothing as he left the Monroe County Jail Thursday morning, minutes after being arraigned on drugs and weapons charges. The district attorney says after they found out he was part of the ring, state police took the lead over Rochester police in the investigation to avoid a conflict of interest. During the course of the investigation, Timothy Granison became apparent to us as being a player in this narcotics ring. And it was at that point that we followed, we followed the evidence, simply as that. Police say around 3.30 yesterday afternoon, troopers stopped a vehicle driven by Granison in front of a home on Birch Crescent. According to a felony complaint, he had a plastic bag containing more than 30 grams of cocaine. He was stopped yesterday um, because of the ongoing narcotics investigation. In, in the course of doing what? Uh, in, the, in the course of, we wanted to stop him because we believe he was in possession of illegal substances. After the traffic stop, authorities say during the search of the couple's home on Woodman Park, they found an unregistered handgun and a semi-automatic rifle. State police say the mayor was not home at the time, but that the couple's 10-year-old daughter was. There was one handgun and one uh, rifle. Both unregistered. Uh, well, the handgun was unregistered, yes. So there was a loaded magazine that was also found in the same bedroom as the handgun. Granison's attorney, John DeMarco, entered a not guilty plea on his client's behalf. He said it's too early to say whether Granison's connection to City Hall could present challenges for a potential trial as they await more evidence in the case. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, things that might happen between now and a potential trial date. Uh, 
in terms of the trial itself, I think, you know, anytime you've got high profile people, uh, getting a jury is always a challenge, but we're, we're a long ways away from that. The district attorney would not say whether the mayor could be heard in any of the wiretaps or if the mayor could face any charges. Don? All right, Tanner. Well, as we mentioned, Grannison's arrest is just part of a month long narcotics investigation. So far, seven people have been charged. Dan Schreck joining us now saying the DA says the office is not done with this investigation yet, Dan. Don, you're absolutely right. The district attorney says so far they have recovered more than two and a half pounds of crack and powdered cocaine, $100,000 in cash, along with three handguns and a semi-automatic rifle. And we're told they are likely not done. Monroe County's DA says the seven-month investigation into a drug ring is far from over. We still haven't searched locations in cars, so and it, it's still ongoing. It, it could be bigger. Police say they arrested seven people and raided seven homes in the city of Rochester over 24 hours, seizing cocaine, guns, and cash. You know, we believe this whole organization was a mid-level drug organization that was infecting the city of Rochester. The home of Mayor Lovely Warren and her husband, Timothy Granison, on Woodman Park was among those searched. Sandra Dorley says the investigation began months ago, and Granison's arrest was not politically motivated. They simply followed the evidence. Timothy Granison was not the original target of this wire investigation. Approximately seven months I met with uh, members of law enforcement. We had a target. We began to go up on phones as we do with a wiretap investigation. The home of Granison's brother, Kevin, was also searched. He was not arrested, although Dorley declined to comment on his alleged role in the investigation. Now, four people are still being held in Monroe County Jail. Three of those suspects have been released and are due back in court at a later date. Don? All right, Dan, we mentioned earlier, began this newscast talking about the mayor's concerns about the timing of her husband's arrest so close to next month's primary election. Politician, voters as well, reacting to the developments. Andrew Benes has been tracking all of that today. Andrew? Yeah, Don, some voters say the mayor should step down immediately, but others say we need to let the legal process play out. Ursula Clark Spidell says she voted for Mayor Lovely Warren in the past few elections. I have been on Mayor Warren's side. But the developing allegations against Warren's husband now have her unsure of who will get her vote in the June primary. It just kind of concerned us. Were we really going to vote for the mayor this time uh, regarding what's going on in her home? She wants to wait for the legal process to play out before making a decision. Others like Marty Murphy says they've made up their mind. You put to be representing the, the community and... And uh, you let your, your people or who, whoever that you, you're dealing with, you know, put you in a position like that, you know, put you in a position like that and cause you to, you know, to lose uh, people to lose respect for you. Malik Evans, the mayor's opponent in next month's primary, says the allegations are disturbing, but he is not rushing to any conclusions. I think you're always shocked when you hear news like this, particularly when it involves uh, um, guns and drugs, things that are plaguing our, in our society. But again, I, I don't know all of the facts yet. I think it's important to wait till all of the facts come out. We'll reserve judgment until we hear more of the facts. Council member Jose Peo says if these allegations are true, he'd like to see a change in City Hall. And in that case, you know, we need to take a look as, as a city council to what type of leadership we want for the rest of the year and if we need to re-examine the city the uh the city charter and take the power all the power away from the mayor and bring it back to city council and we did reach out to warren's campaign manager we have not yet heard back don all right, thank you, Andrew. Thank you also, uh, Jane and Tanner and uh, Jane, for bringing us up to date. Our team coverage will continue. Uh, that online, we've also posted all of today's news conferences in full on 13wham.com. And, of course, uh, more coming up on 13wham news at 10 and 11.